Um, next up, we are going to have Brendan Burns, CVP um, of Azure Control Plane, Open Source, and Cloud Native Compute at Microsoft. And he's going to be telling us about GitOps as an evolution of Kubernetes. Thank you so much, Brendan. Take it away. Cool. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Uh, yeah. All right. Good. I always hate it when like you get in. I got into one of these when like ten minutes in, someone in the chat was like, "Is he saying something?" So uh, I uh, I always like to make sure that people can hear me. All right. Thanks for having me here. I, I hope you've had a good day. I understand I'm the the closing. Um, the nice thing about virtual conferences is I'm not the person separating you from the reception. Um, I guess you have to you can do the self reception yourself afterwards. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, GitOps and the long title of, of it wouldn't fit on my slide. So let's say GitOps and Kubernetes, but really talking about I think how GitOps um, is an evolution of what we were trying to achieve with the with with Kubernetes. Um, so I can get my slides to advance. All right, it's Kubernetes thing. Like, what is it? Um, I. Could somebody tell? No, I'm kidding about that. Um, but I did kind of want to go through actually what our goals were and our motivations were for designing Kubernetes and how I think that provides a framework for what we think of when we think of uh, the the workflows that GitOps is doing. Um, you know, I think first and foremost, what we were thinking about when we were developing this system was a the idea that we needed to both make it easy and make it safe at the same time, right? There's too much work involved in building and deploying applications, especially when you want to deploy reliable applications around the world. There's too much uh, work involved in, in a developer, too many, especially back then, too many things that you needed to to get right. Um, this was one of our main motivations, I think, was that uh, someone could you know, didn't have to shrink away from the idea of, of deploying an application out into the cloud or out in a physical environment, and that hopefully nobody needed these sorts of uh, life preservers in order to uh, successfully manage their applications. That's a major and important part of what Kubernetes was all about, is all about, I think, hopefully. Um, another thing that we were thinking a lot about was POSIX for the cloud. I think it's kind of maybe easy in this time and age of, of the cloud native ecosystem to think like, oh yeah, applications are portable and it's easy to move, easy-ish maybe, to move an application between clouds. But honestly, especially at the time, it just wasn't, right? And the idea of like moving things from on-prem to in the cloud or moving things from a cloud to another cloud, not an easy thing to do. You really got embedded into a particular cloud. And the major thought that we were thinking about is how do we up-level that? Can't have an ecosystem, can't have a community um, if you don't have a, a shared piece of infrastructure for everybody to build on top of. And that leads us, I think, to this idea of an open ecosystem, right? Um, you know, I think that it was a, a, a critical aspect of everything that we did. And I think you're seeing this reflected in the um, people who you've seen come and talk in the conference so far today, the fact that we can all get together around this piece of technology, the open ecosystem is a core component of what we were thinking about when we thought about developing Kubernetes. So then given if those are the, if those are the sort of the foundational tenets of what we were trying to achieve um, when we developed Kubernetes, I think, you know, obviously if we're at this conference and, and I'm talking about GitOps as the evolution of Kubernetes, you know, what, what in the world does GitOps got, have to do with it? Right, um, and I think this is the most interesting part of, of, of the, the framing because, to be honest, you know, GitOps is not something that was on our mind when we were developing uh, this framework. This is, you know, one of those things that happens um, when you put something out there and a bunch of people find it useful and a bunch of people start thinking about the way that they've been doing things and how can the way that they've been doing things intersect with this you know, community and technology that you're developing. Um, and so it's, it's fascinating to si simultaneously say, hey, there was no way that we anticipated this idea coming forward, but then also seeing the ways in which it relates to what we were talking about um, and how it relates back and how people were inspired, I hope, by the things that we were, we were talking about um, to solve a problem. Um, and I think that the thing that we were talking about most, right, of all of the goals, you know, that we were talking about for Kubernetes to achieve, the thing that we were thinking about the most at the time was to declarative all the things, right? And this, at the end of the day, was the most important thing that um, we could achieve, right? And I think we have actually gotten a really long way down this, this, this particular road. I gave a talk shortly before 
um, we released Kubernetes out into the world in, in the January, I think, of 2013. Um, and it was effectively about declarative configuration and, and how incredibly important it was for people to do declarative configuration. Um, and it was, you know, honestly, I got a bunch of people coming up after the talk and saying, well, but what about my bash script and what about my, you know, PowerShell? And um, it's amazing to think fast forward, you know, uh, eight plus years, how this, this declarative, all the things um, has, has really transformed the way that we think about um, building and operating our software. Um, and, and for the better, frankly, right? This, is, this has really been an important force for sanitizing the things that we do. This really intersects with GitOps, I think, we, when we start with just the Git part of GitOps, right? It, you know, it, Git, you wouldn't necessarily think of Git as being a, a declaration, but it actually is. Right? When you think about Git, it's a declarative history of changes. Right? Every single you know, commit that you merge into that Git repository, it's a, a, it's a declaration of, it's a patch really, it's a declaration of change from state A to change from state B. It's effectively this declarative record of all of the different, and, and it's kind of amazing, right? And in, in, in some ways, this is what defer or makes Git different than any other source control system that had come before, where it is this log of all of the different changes. And so I really think that in the declarative um, and making everything declarative, this idea that all of your configuration should be in Git um, is a natural byproduct of a desire to go declarative and everything else. Because while I think we really succeeded when we talked about making, you know, think people think about doing things declaratively, when we made people think about um, configuration files and we made people think about you know a, a data record of what you were doing the number of people myself included who even today are doing like yes yes i am declarative cube control create dash f some url is huge right and and though we have perhaps eliminated the snowflakes that are on our servers um we are creating clusters all the time that are snowflakes and again, like I'm not here to cast stones. I've got a little Kubernetes cluster right here underneath this desk in my home. And I don't think that I could recreate it if I, you know, yanked all the hard drives, put in fresh hard drives and said, recreate my cluster. I don't think I could, I mean, I, I could eventually recreate it, but it's gonna take time. There's a whole bunch of stuff from monitoring software that I deployed once that I haven't upgraded in forever. Um, to applications that I built and, you know, catted a very simple uh, deployment to, to deploy out into the cluster and have never touched again. There is all kinds of things running on this cluster declaratively for which I have no declarative record of how it got there, right? And I think that in Git, we have exactly that declarative record of when did it get created? When was it modified? Um, and with Git ops, connecting the ops part to the Git, we also know that it is reflected out into the cluster, right? And so not only is it the case that we have this declarative record of all of the changes that we've made to our configurations, um, but we have also the knowledge that it is the way that this thing got installed. And so therefore, if I was properly using Git ops on the home cluster, I'm using some of it, by the way. I'm using a lot of the Azure Arc stuff that you hopefully you saw earlier. Um, but sadly, there's some stuff that predates that that I'm not as clean about. I could actually rip all the hard drives out of my cluster, put them back in, re-image Kubernetes. It would sync up with GitOps and Azure Arc. Cluster would be reinitialized, and I'd be up back up and running, right? Um, and that's a, that's a huge step forward in terms of get providing exactly the same benefits of declarative infrastructure that we talk about a lot when we talk about YAML, but we don't actually necessarily always follow when we actually take those YAMLs and throw them onto the cluster. Um, but there's a lot more in the Git that ties into some of the things that I talked about earlier as well around making this a safer environment for people. And specifically, Git has things like code review. Right, so not only do we have this declarative record of all the changes, but we also have multiple people looking at those changes. So all of those principles that we've developed around 
software development, around having code review, around knowing you know, that multiple sets of eyes have sanity checked a particular change that we pushed out into our cluster, we have them here. It's very hard if you're cube control apply dash effing on the command line, it's very hard to have somebody looking over your shoulder and saying, yep, that's a good change that we have going in there. Right. And so again, the movement to GitOps enables not just the declarative record of things, but the make it easy, make it safe parts of Kubernetes, where all of the workflows that we thought about in software engineering come to apply to our infrastructure as well. And when we're thinking about the ways in which we develop software, it's also too important to realize that there's also this movement around shift left. And again, a movement, to, a shift to GitOps isn't actually just a shift to, um, it's not just a shift to, you know, having a declarative record of all of your changes. It's not just a shift to having uh, multiple people looking at those changes. It's actually a shift to having tests for your configurations. Right? What is what is a Git repo except for a place where you can set pre-submit tests? Where you can have post-submit tests. Right? These are places where you can put in sanity checking. You can put in all sorts of introspection and uh, understanding of what exactly your change is going to do, and be certain that when you make those changes, well, hopefully certain or as certain as your tests can get you to be, be certain that when you make those changes, it's going to be safe. Right? And again, there's nothing in that cube control dash f workflow that um or even to be honest helm create or any of your other favorite tools for doing these things there's nothing in those workflows that enable you to have that kind of testing inserted right and so in getting everything into a git repository and ensuring that you know uh the only way that configurations flow into your cluster is through something like flux um, and the workflows involved in flux that's the way that we can actually shift left not just for our code that we're writing, but shift left for the things that we're deploying as well. And again, this ties in as well to the notion that we're really supposed to be making it easier for developers to do the right thing. Um, and then I think that the final piece uh, of this that is so amazing that ties into what we were trying to do with Kubernetes ties back to that POSIX for the cloud, right? Because we were in designing uh this posix for the cloud and this unified api for everywhere yes we were thinking about how do we build ecosystems and how do we build communities but we were also thinking the the poor developer who has to push their code into all of these different environments is faced with an incredible challenge today if we can define a higher level layer they can stand a chance of writing applications that can go anywhere but what we didn't talk about and what we didn't necessarily have a solution for was how do you actually push that code everywhere how do you actually ensure that every single cluster around the world, you know, Azure has more than 50 regions of managed Kubernetes that people can create clusters for so that they have low latency to their users. If they're a gaming company or a retail company, places where latency is critically important, 57 clusters of Kubernetes out there that are running. How do I ensure that they're all running the same version of my code? How do I ensure that they're all running the same version of policy? And how can I do that at scale without sort of having 57 directories or manually going through and checking every single cluster and the answer in many cases for many people is this GitOps workflow right because i can point every cluster at a specific git repo and know that you know when i make a change that change gets rolled out around the world and so if the kubernetes api is this posix for the cloud that allows your applications to run everywhere a workflow like GitOps is a, an opportunity for you to at scale manage what those applications look like when they run everywhere and i think there's huge compliments in our goals of ensuring that you know the declarative world is the world that you see and the world that you see is the world that stretches everywhere around the globe the last thing that i wanted to highlight um before you know we we end this conference is the most proud part that i bring personally from the kubernetes experience was this community that we developed. I think there were a lot of orchestrators. People sometimes sort of forget how many orchestrators there were at the time in 2013. Maybe they weren't paying attention or maybe they you know, just have, just have forgotten. There's a lot of orchestrators out there. And while I really like Kubernetes, any one of them could have provided the solutions that Kubernetes did. Um, and for a while there, it was a little bit of a competitive marketplace. But I think the thing that really truly made a difference for all of us was the community that we built. And I think when I look at 
the Flux community, when I look at the partnerships that we at Microsoft have built with Weaveworks, when I look at all of the different people who have come here to speak, um, to the ways that we've contributed code into, you know, project started, projects that we started like Gatekeeper, projects that we can join into like Flux, projects that have been existing for a long time like Kubernetes, the shared community that hopefully you all feel and that we are experiencing today is really something that I think is common across all of these, these uh, projects and a great representation um, of, of the value of open source in everything that we do. And so I think in all of these ways from um, enabling even more uh, evolution towards declaring all the things in enabling people to do things safely and securely um, in enabling people to reach the world from a single Git repository and a single container image. And finally, to come together as a single community around these ideas. Um, I really do think that GitOps represents a lot of what we were trying to achieve in the development of Kubernetes and frankly, a lot of what we have all achieved together. So thank you so much for listening and thanks for coming to the conference and to Weaveworks for the opportunity to speak. Um, and as always, I'm up on Twitter or anywhere else to, to hear your ideas. Thanks.